there are two sides to combat in Bug Fables, offense and defense. In this video, we'll be going over the aspects of defense in Bug Fables, from skills to medals. Hopefully you learned something. Without further ado, let's take it from the top. Starting with defense and ways to prevent damage, all three bugs have the same defense of zero. V and Leaf also both have 7 HP max. Kabu, however, has 9, so he by default takes hits better. After your party attacks or you suffer a first strike in battle, the enemy gets to attack you. With hard mode off, only the first most enemy gets a free hit. On hard mode, however, everyone on the enemy side gets to attack you for free. It's important to note that unless you block an incoming attack, you always take at least one damage. Even if you have, let's say, 42 defense and take a hit from a seedling's tackle with an attack down status debuff, it can still hurt you. There are exceptions, however, when under the effects of certain metals like Frostbite when taking a direct attack while frozen, or Shock Trooper while numbed. Even without blocking, you'll take zero damage. When attacked, you have a few ways to defend yourself, but the one universal to everyone is blocking. If you press an action button shortly before taking damage, you reduce damage taken by one and avoid any negative status elements associated with them. Altogether, you have 19 frames to block an incoming attack. If you block an attack within the first 4 frames, or 1 15th of a second, you reduce damage taken by 2 instead of 1. This is called a super block. But if you block any later while still reducing damage, it's just a standard block. Be aware that you cannot just mash the block button to reduce damage. It must be timed. If you try to block too early, you're left wide open for an incoming attack and will have to wait roughly half a second before you can try to block again. This cooldown, however, does not exist if you successfully block though, so if an attack sees you get hit multiple times consecutively, stay sharp and calm. Your life may well depend on it. Many medals exist also to take advantage of blocking like Spiky Boss, Super Block Plus, and Block Heal, but more on that later. Positioning is important in this game. In addition to affecting how much damage you do depending on whether or not you're in front, it also impacts the probability of being attacked. Being in the front increases damage dealt, but it also puts a bigger target on you. There is a 60% chance that the bug in front will be targeted by an enemy attack, with the middle and back targets having a 20% chance each. Certain attacks can also target specific positions in battle, but not right away. These attacks are signaled by a yellow yield sign, with a red number on them to count down the turns before impact. Once the turns hit zero, the attack will complete. You can block these all the same, but they're also possible to avoid entirely if you have a bug that's unconscious by positioning them to where the delayed attack is aiming for. As far as how to upgrade defense in this game, there are many more medals geared towards reducing damage taken and even restoring HP rather than increasing damage dealt. Just like in my offense guide, we'll be looking at all these medals in order of availability. When poisoned, Poison Defender increases your defense by 1. This medal's effect can be doubled if both copies of Poison Defender are equipped to one bug. If an attack that is poisonous afflicts the equipper, the defense is calculated before damage is received. If you're confident in your timing, Super Block Plus is here to give you a notable advantage. Bugs with this medal equipped are able to reduce the damage taken further by one extra point of damage off of a successful Super Block for each copy equipped. For Kabu, this medal goes even further and provides the Spiky Bot medal additional recoil damage for direct attacks. Whether they're the rams of a seedling or swings on Sen stick, recoil damage is dealt. Two damage for one super block plus, and three damage for two. It goes without saying that you need the super block for any extra damage, or you'll deal only one damage back if you block. When you're sent to Dreamland, Heavy Sleeper will keep you there until you're ready to leave. This medal will prevent attacks from waking you up prematurely. However, it also reduces damage taken by half, rounded down. Moreover, the HP regeneration you normally get from being asleep will heal you thrice as fast. It's great against foes that have single strong hits, but multiple weak hits will be dangerous to be hit by, because the numbers can add up very quickly. When paired with Jowsy Cake, this can be a very effective way to restore your HP in a pinch. Just be careful against bosses with the means to strike multiple times. That will be a nightmare you want to wake up from as soon as possible. If you choose to hang in the back with back support equipped, you're given plus one defense. It's as simple as that. Attacks targeting the back will do one less damage. It protecting a bug less likely to be targeted is less of a selling point than another meta we'll be talking about later, but Kabu's taunt does give some merit to its existence by forcing the back to be attacked. It's an otherwise decent medal. Compared to other medals in this video, Tardigrade Shield is actually a skill that costs TP to use. 
The skill, granted, is called Sturdy, which protects from status elements and increases defense when used by 3. The skill also blocks turn relays from allies and ends the user's turn immediately, even if they have more turns after the meta was used. To compensate, Sturdy restores HP equal to however many turns are left on the user, so if you use Sturdy with 2 turns left, you restore 1 HP. Meadows that aid in restoring HP may or may not count depending on what you consider defensive, but I think it's fair to mention them here. Prayer in particular heals the bug equipping it for 2 HP for each copy on whenever they do the Do Nothing command. It can be activated only once per turn. Of all the meadows on this list, Shock Trooper is likely my favorite. When numb, the bug with this metal equipped becomes invulnerable to all incoming enemy attacks. This is a metal that is ripe for exploitation when lumped together with Kabu's taunt skill for certain bosses. Sure, the user can't move, but when you have two other bugs primed to fight and support each other, you're going to be sitting very pretty. As such, it's one of the best metals to be used offensively, as you can protect literally everyone when used optimally, not just the bug with this metal on them. There may be a couple of moves that can still cast status elements against you like from the Doom Scorpion Stinger, but you're generally very safe. Defense Exchange is pretty standard for reducing damage. For each copy equipped to a bug, they have an additional point of defense, sacrificing one attack power in the process. Leave Cloak, oh boy. I'm not gonna make any friends for saying this, but I find this metal to be extremely niche. What it does, it reduces the damage of the equipped bug being attacked by forcing the game to choose an attack's target a second time if the bug with the metal equipped is chosen the first time. Area of effect attacks will not be hindered by this metal. Adding onto the probability I mentioned earlier in this video, the bug in front will have a 36% chance of being targeted by a single target attack if Leaf Cloak is equipped to them, or a measly 4% chance if they're in the middle or back. Remain steadfast and immovable with Reflection. When using your do-nothing command with this metal, your defense increases by 1 for each copy of this metal equipped to the user. When going up to bat, be sure to swing for defenses, but if you can't manage that, first plating may save you from at least striking out. When attacked, this metal will absorb the first to come your way. If you try to block with this metal coming into play, you will suffer the cooldown for whiffing a block, so be careful. Or else, you'll end up taking even more damage if you didn't use this metal after all. Certain scripted attacks will still hurt you through this metal, but it's otherwise a solid option for short battles, especially in the Cave of Trials. Whenever you block an attack, Block Q will restore 1 HP to the bug equipping it. When the HP is restored will come after the damage from the enemy is applied, so if you super block an otherwise fatal attack, you'll hang on with 1 HP left. This is even true if you miss the first block of an attack that strikes multiple times. If you choose to hang 10 in the front with front support equipped, you're given plus 1 defense. It's as simple as that. Attacks targeting the front will do 1 less damage. Considering it defends the target most likely to be attacked, it's a handy metal in theory. The 8 MP cost, though, makes it the most expensive metal in the game, so you may or may not value it for how much it costs. If you can hold up for long enough, or you just want to use a certain exploit that I refuse to justify in this channel, HP Core may be one of the best metals you'll ever find. It restores 2 HP every 2 turns, or 4 HP if both are equipped to a single bug. Last, and certainly not least, Last Stand. Only available via bounties, it increases the equipped bug's defense by 2 when HP is at 4 or less. When both equipped to a single bug, their defense is boosted by a whopping 4. For players running with low HP, this can be a huge asset in battle. It can be quickly activated through metals that force your HP down like hard charge, and the extra defense goes insanely far in a game with numbers as small as Bug Fables has them. There are also certain metals that offer resistance to status summons. These include Poison Resistance, Sleep Resistance, Numb Resistance, and Freeze Resistance. Equipping just one of these to a bug affords them a 50% chance of avoiding the status element while both being equipped to a single bug grants 100% immunity to the status element instead. If you're consuming an item that afflicts the consumer with a status element, only one must be equipped to avoid being afflicted. A metal also exists called Resist All, which grants a 50% resistance to all status elements that are negative. Not just the aforementioned 4, but also Burn, Ink, and Sticky. It, however, also blocks status elements from items consumed, so be aware of that if you plan on using items in conjunction with certain metals to take advantage of them. Leaf also has some spells to reduce damage you take, namely Fortify and Enfeeble. They cast Defense Up and Attack Down respectively. The statuses speak for themselves, and the same for the plus variants. The only real difference in battle is that the plus variants not only work for all targets, but also last for 3 turns, not just 2. Finally, there's one more means of increasing defense. 
Iron Seeds are available only very late in the game at the end of Chapter 6. By that I mean after you grab the Flame Brews from Vanessa. They are super costly, costing you a whopping 180 berries just for one. But they permanently increase a single bug's defense step by one with absolutely zero drawbacks. Yes, there's also Patson, but seriously, this is the closest you're going to get to a direct upgrade in defense in any way. And only two are available. The one you can buy from Sun here, but the other one can be got from Mackey from his quest, Confidential. Of course, there are also certain skills to use in battle that offer defensive value. There is obviously a lot less to talk about, though, compared to offensive skills, but the few to exist are super potent in their own right, so let's talk about them. Taunt. This move affects all enemies in battle. Any attacks from the opposing side can only target Kabu, regardless of his positioning. If Kabu is defeated with this move active, attacks will target either V or Leaf instead at random. This skill can only be used if there are entities above the ground. If an enemy is on the ground and this move is used, Taunt will still draw enemy fire in Kabu's direction. This doesn't necessarily have to be an enemy either. You can use Taunt while the Watcher is burrowed on the ground if he has, say, a Sand or Ice Pillar active. Sweeping attacks that hit your whole party at once, however, will still hurt Leaf and V as well. A metal called Deep Taunt exists also, which adds status to Kabu's Taunt skill. All enemies gain plus one attack for one turn, but also lose one defense. Bubble Shield and Bubble Shield Light These moves summon a Bubble Shield around the chosen bug in battle that lasts for a single turn. Any attacks that make contact with them will do zero damage. The differences between the Bubble Shield Light and a standard Bubble Shield are that Bubble Shield Light grants a shield for a single bug, while Bubble Shield gives all three a shield at the expense of Leaf using two turns instead of just one. As a result, Leaf loses his next turn to attack unless you have at least two turns when using the skill. If you do have two turns, Leaf's turn will still end, but he'll be able to act the very next turn. Bubble Shields also last long enough to take the late attacks that hit at the end of the enemy turn. As sturdy as Bubble Shield is, though, it can be immediately destroyed by an abomination. Secret and Sharing Stash V doesn't really have a move to protect other bugs. Rather, she has the ability to heal and restore HP. Secret Stash restores 4 HP to a single bug, while Sharing Stash restores an additional 2 HP to everyone, and casts HP Regeneration over the course of the following two turns. The initial heals of both of these moves also cure poisoning and have increased potency with the aid of Heal Plus, restoring one extra HP for each equipped to V. It's important to note though that neither of V's stash moves are made any cheaper when using life cast on her, but TP Saver does still reduce the cost, so be aware of that. Now knowing your options is obviously very important, but it's even more important to know where your options are located. So click and watch the video on the screen right now and check out my quest tier list because most of the medals in this video are only obtained through these means. And I show you exactly which quest to take, and the quest that V herself would pass up. 